This is a procedural material, a result of many layers of mathematically based textures, stacked upon each other, where each layer simulates a different material property, making the material look realistic. It might look like a regular material for 3D graphics, however, if you zoom in, you will notice two things. First, the material is extremely detailed, and second, its resolution is not determined by pixels, but rather with vector-based calculations. However, the biggest advantage is that these materials are completely adjustable. This means that you can adjust any material property, including the material color, color variation, texture scale, roughness, and the scale and distribution of individual elements. And you can create basically unlimited variations of the same material in the real time. Now, all of this is cool. But the question is, how these materials are made, how exactly they work, why are they so complex, and where you can find them? Well, let's start from the beginning. In 3D graphics, there are two proper approaches to how materials can be applied to a 3D model. The first one is by using PBR materials. A PBR material is basically a set of texture maps, where each one contains information about a specific material property. Separately, they are pretty useless, but when they are combined together with a shader, they create a realistic simulation of real material, which means that the material accurately interacts with the lighting, making it perfect solution for realistic rendering. Well, almost. Even though PBR materials are famous for their convenience, realism and simplicity, they also have their own limitations. Probably the biggest one is that you can't adjust the material based on your preferences, which means that sometimes when you need a specific material you may not find it online and you need to use alternative options. And that's why there is the second texturing approach that involves procedural materials. These materials are not real, they are made directly in the 3D program by using a node based system. Basically you start with a simple texture node and by adding more and more texture layers and nodes together you will get more and more realistic material appearance. Now, you might ask, why would somebody do this complex process of creating material from scratch when they can simply use the PBR materials? Well, the reason is that all the downsides that PBR materials have are the strong sides of the procedural materials. So let's talk about the resolution first. The PBR materials are using bitmap digital images, meaning the resolution of all the maps is determined by pixels. When you have a high resolution, you also have more pixels, which means you can have more detailed textures. But with every resolution doubling, the image file size doubles as well, and sometimes even quadruples. So the cost that you are paying to have higher resolution is longer render time and more used VRAM. On the other hand, the resolution of procedural materials is determined by vectors, rather than pixels. When you are building a procedural material, you are using a combination of procedural texture nodes that are based on mathematical equations that are fully adjustable. This means that the resolution can be adjusted as well as anything else. You can actually zoom 1000 times into the material, and even on the macro level, you can still see the sharp details. And because vector files are way lighter in the file size than a bitmap, you will basically get a higher resolution for even lower memory, which almost feels like a nonsense. But let's talk about the biggest competitive advantage, where the procedural materials are absolutely dominating over traditional image texturing, and that is customizability. You see, when you use image textures, there is not much you can do to customize the material, change its characteristics or make different material variations, because an image is not interactive element. All the information about the material is baked into the canvas, and in the case of PBR materials, it's also separated into individual maps for realistic light simulation. And that's why procedural materials are taking the lead in this category. Because since they are basically composed of mathematical equations, each and every property that you can think of can be fully customized. And if you simplify the node chaos by making a group of the most important material properties, that you want to control, you can make a simple and user-friendly interface. With this method you have unlimited options about what characteristics you want to control and how you want to customize the appearance and behavior of the material. For example, look at this metal. You can control the rust, damage, base color, the amount of imperfections on the surface, bumps, roughness, displacement, material scale, color variations, and if you don't like how the elements are distributed, you can make infinite variations of the same material in the real time. Another great use of this is that you can create animated materials and effects that would be hard to create with image textures. So now let's talk about the appearance. Without any doubt, PBR materials are usually more realistic than procedural materials because they are mostly based on real-world surface scans or high-quality photo references with more captured details such as imperfections, color variations, 
and natural surface behavior, which procedural methods often struggle to replicate authentically. But when it comes to the application, they have another huge problem. Since image textures are limited in their canvas, they often create that unrealistic repetition pattern when they are tiled too many times. Even though most of these materials are designed to be seamless, when you tile any texture enough times, then this repetition is simply inevitable. Now we can try to mask and hide the repetition with different techniques, which will help to a certain degree. Actually, I made a whole separate video about this, so if you are interested, click on the white box with the link that has just popped up in the top right corner. However, most of these methods work only on certain materials, which is not practical. Now, procedural materials are not limited by canvas or boundaries, so they are infinitely large. This means that you can scale them as you like, and you still won't see any repeating patterns, because when you have dozens of randomized procedural texture nodes combined into one material, the odds that two areas will look exactly the same is basically zero. So now when you know what procedural materials are, how they work, how they are made, and how they differ from PBR materials. But where you can find these materials? Well, for the last year I have been gathering references and photos of materials that most 3D artists use in their renders. I did that because I wanted to test out my skills. So I used these references to create 87 procedural materials inside the free open source program called Blender. And I'm not gonna lie, it was a tough task. But I really learned a lot about procedural system and how you can turn simple textures into realistic materials. After I made them, I decided to put them on Gumroad as a pack so other people can get it as well. All the materials are fully customizable, infinitely large, with adjustable details, and they contain materials from different categories like metal, wood, tiles, fruit, vegetables, and effects that can be animated within two clicks. You apply most of these materials just by grabbing them and dropping them on any mesh object, without any unwrapping, which makes the process much easier. All materials are also using tags to make the searching more user-friendly. Now, new materials are already on the way, and the pack will soon be updated to 100 materials, but the price will also increase, so if you want to get these materials, is the first link in the bio, and if you also use the discount code Graffinity in the checkout, you will get 20% off, which is a pretty good offer. But if you are still unsure whether you should get this pack or not, you can get the light version which is completely free, so we can try out the materials first. That's all for me today. If you want me to create a tutorial on these materials, make sure to leave a like and comment, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.